Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks so much for staying after that break. That was pretty grand crescendo. You could have just as well left. <laughs> um, uh, but I appreciate that, and I also appreciate uh, the hard effort of ACAW, everybody there that's uh, been so kind to invite us to present here tonight and been extra patience with us. Um, uh, my name is Matthew Borsevich, and I'm introducing uh, Polishir Forum, which is a collective, an art collective. There are five of them all of who refuse to get up here <laughs> at the current moment. But we, what I'm going to do is just do a brief introduction about um, the group, uh, who they are, what they're about, and then we're going to have an interlude, uh, which is a group activity, and then uh, we'll have an open discussion with the group, hopefully, uh, at that point. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm really glad that we uh, were sort of following up after this discussion here about the sort of cultural specificity of a lot of the work that we've been seeing today, the struggle with and the embracement of or the celebration of the cultural context from where a lot of these artists uh, come from. Uh, because Paulette Shear Forum Office is uh, grounded in um, the, uh, not only the very specific, but the very frenetic, overwhelming cultural context of China for the last 40 or 50 years. Um, these are all artists that were born in the 1960s into a very collective atmosphere. Uh, it was uh, at the outset of the Cultural Revolution where social um, order was basically uh, determined by the state and the work units that were sort of at the mercy of the state. Uh, one's life, one's marriage, one's birth, one's uh, job, fortune, etc. living arrangements were all determined by the state. Um, and the collective. Um, so um, one of the things I should also say is that um, not only was it about the, I mean, that this group is founded in this very specific cultural um, background, but it's also uh, the, the sort of uh, starting point of their work or, or the foundation of the work is also about the dichotomy between the individual and the collective. Um, these guys were formed in 2005, and I should just mention their names, uh, Hong Hao, Xiaoyu, uh, Song Dong, Liu Jianhua, and Lang Lin. Uh, every time they're introduced, they're introduced in the order of their height. Uh, that's the egalitarian nature of the group. Uh, that was the only way that they could sort of um, keep it fair. Um, so these guys were um, founded in 2005, but they were sort of uh, minor sort of anticipation of the group earlier than that in the late 90s and they started with discussions between Lung Lin who is the critic curator uh, and the artist Song Dong whilst in Berlin uh, and looking around at the sort of popular discourse at the time which was very much um, grounded in, in, in multiculturalism and how China uh, being a monocultural society for the most part and also having a socialist uh, system really didn't fit into that discourse so well. There was no sort of uh, colonial past to deal with. There was no other to really um, to, to, to um, uh, work against or to position oneself against. So. Um, uh, that was sort of the beginning of a conversation, a discourse that sort of uh, came uh, into formation in 2005. Now in 2005, um, I'm just going to read two texts that sort of maybe hopefully illuminate the cultural uh, and, uh, or social political context of, of how these guys were formed and, and, and um, what they are about. So 2005, it was a celebratory situation at the outset of the 21st century in China, ruled by individual pursuits and independent action. Uh, China's GDP was holding steady at 11% annual growth, and the millions lifted out of poverty decades earlier were already busying themselves, renovating their second home for the third time. Preconceptions that Chinese contemporary art might just be a flash in the pan was about to give way to international au auction record-breaking sales, which would send art prices bubbling like champagne and everyone grappling for a piece of the pie. It was precisely in this environment of crass commercialism and egotism that helped foster a general sense of disillusionment for these five individuals. Um, like I mentioned, the members of 
Polishir form were all born and raised in an entirely different social context at the outset of cultural revolution when individualism and the pursuit of wealth were not only discouraged but systematically eliminated. Uh, when communion living was not only prescribed but mandatory and every individual served the state and in return art's sole purpose was to serve the people. Uh, in retrospect, the collective society, will, with, while, with not, uh, while not without its many inherent problems and staunch critics, was embraced wholeheartedly by countless millions as a way to change the world. Um, so the Polish reform's disillusionment with the situation at hand in the 2005 uh, wasn't so much a, a sort of a rejection or a sentiment uh, or like sort of a sentimentality for the past, but it was about trying to reimagine a space for socialism in the context, the sort of hyper-capitalist context of uh, China at that moment and today. Um, and for them, the solace and the uh, inspiration came from uh, the collective, about being together and how they recognize people of their generation um, sort of, or, or the sort of the, uh, the evidence of that collectivism that still exists in society, whether it was uh, the popular public baths or people eating in large groups or the endless business meetings or um, uh, you know, people traveling together in large groups. Um, so, um, while polish form both relishes in and is defined by these communal activities, they are not sentimental for China's socialist past, nor they, do they wish to revive it. Instead, the group is interested in the void that this legacy has left in society and the possibilities of socialism as an imaginary space. Um, maybe I'll just forward some... Um, by this time, you guys have all this badge here, the, the badge. So the, the blue badge comes from this piece, which was the first piece that they, uh, that they made in 2005. Um, and this was called Only One Wall. And what you see is just a big blue expanse. Uh, that's the wallpaper that was erected onto that wall. And the wall was built in the gallery uh, uh, for the sole purpose of carrying this wallpaper. Um, the, 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 the image comes, it's extrapolated from a photograph from one of their collective outings. Basically, the group's activities define their practice. Uh, it's all about this collective experience that they share, much like any group of friends uh, would um, be together. They would go out eating together. They would go uh, traveling together, maybe reading the same book. Um, sharing the same experience and how they forfeit uh, their individuality for this for the sake and for the nourishment of the collective uh, it's almost uh, something that's spiritual or emotional um, uh, but the in the in the first venue which was the Beijing commune at the time uh, there was this beam that sort of just you know took a chunk out of that nice big blue expanse of sea. Um, and, and the image was chosen, I guess, basically for its abstruseness. It's something that uh, is infinite, has infinite capacity and ultimate failure of like providing a clear metaphor. And that was the sort of attraction to it. It was just basically a sounding board. There was nothing there but this big blue expanse. Um, and uh, the beam at top was sort of the the imperfection of this kind of what would otherwise be a perfect whole, and it was what they attracted to them, and it sort of represented their group. It was um, uh, not only like sort of the uh, the fifth side to this square, but also um, the imperfection that gave this form character. Um, I'm just going to read uh, one of the. Uh, manifestos that always accompanies each ex exhibition they do. They always provide a manifesto, which you see there on the yellow uh, banner. Uh, and this kind of describes their form and content, both of which is collective, the collective. We can experience things that I cannot. And in this sense, I's desires and imaginations are strengthened. When we becomes a dimension of I, the I in we often becomes impractical or irrelevant. And I's imagination is likewise unclear. 
Being together has already become our form, and eating, drinking, and playing has become our content. We suddenly discover that this is a form of society. Um, Polisher Forms is a collective, and as such, their activities are aimed not so much at productive results, but instead the mere idea of togetherness. The desired result of being together is simply the cultivation of a collective consciousness, at expanding the individual's intellectual and spiritual capacity through shared experience, time, and space. They meet, discuss, eat, drink, travel, bathe, read books, and play together. The content of their endeavors are articulated by their form, and their form is their content, the collective. Um, I'm just going to fast forward to um, Mr. Jung. In 2008, Mr. Jung was born. Mr. Jung was the personification of uh, Paula Shear Form's idea that we become I. The portrait of, is of a man staring blankly out of a starched blank uh, white shirt, like any ID photo that you might find. Um, however, this image is a composite portrait of the group's uh, five individuals. And like any parent shares the traits of each of its, or like any child shares the, pa the traits of each of its uh, children, uh, each of its parents. Uh, so like the eyes are one of them, the nose is another. Um, uh, so this was created for a public art project in uh, Shanghai where it was hung in various public spaces much like the ubiquitous leader portrait of uh, Mao's time. Sort of as like this kind of solemn echo reminder. Uh, Mr. Zheng, however, is only a portrait, a symbol, an icon, a fictitious play on the void that fa socialism has left on society. Um, and at this point, I'm going to invite Mrs. Zheng up to lead us in a group activity. So at this point, I hope everybody could get up out of their seats and stand up. Hello? Please welcome Mrs. Zheng. Hello. Hi. Um, thank you, Matthew, for the introduction. So um, instead of um, giving the speech, uh, Polly Shear Forum Office decides that they're going to do something new. So we really appreciate if you could collaborate and follow my instruction. So everybody, please first close your eyes. Have a moment of silence and think about all the things that happened today. Something new, something inspiring, all the great performance. Great, now open your eyes. Great. Um, we're going to do, um, let's roll our head clockwise three times very slowly. Polly Share Office, Polly Share Office, Polly Share Office, and then backwards three times. Polly Share Office, Polly Share Office, Polly Share Office. Right? Lift your left shoulder. And bring it to the back, and right, bring it to the back, left, right, left, right, both. Great. Does your body feel something? Better. Very relaxing, isn't it? Great. Now, raise your left hand. And everybody bend the other way. Can we go even further? Careful. <laughs> Okay, left hand, right hand. All the way. Even further. Great. Now, shake your leg. Ladies wearing high heels, sore, right? Great. Last but not least, let's first raise your left hand, right hand, and bring it all the way. Right hand over your ear, over your ear, and hit it. Hit right. Hit your left hand with your right hand. Again. Faster. Thank you.
So I hope everybody feels a lot better now. Uh, at this point, we're going to invite uh, Polish Year Forum, the members of Polish Year Forum, up to have a seat along with Shen Rei Jun, uh, the curator of their upcoming show at the Queen's Museum of Art. And we're going to have a little discussion. Shanghai. Oh, maybe we need another chair. <laughs> Okay, so so this whole idea comes from, I'll just show you, just so you know. These five empty seats on the left, that's the, um, the image from their first meeting together, the sort of, the evolution of this uh, ideological movement called Polish Year Form uh, started with those five seats, so this whole empty five seats was sort of a, a, a sort of a homage to that. Um, Unfortunately, Shen Rui Jun and I will stand. Maybe you want to sit here. Shen. So, um, yeah. so basically, um, the group's activities are documented, and the documentation becomes vehicles for uh, some of their work, including paintings, uh, photographic work, videos, etc. Um, they, they've done all kinds of things: films, performances, interventions, sculptures, uh, uh, mostly uh, conceptual projects. But um, a lot of it's based on their uh, the sort of ideological or the, the the evolution of their activities from 2005 till this year, which is nine years. Their tenth birthday is next year, um, and um, uh, much like any other ideological movement, say Mao's Long March or Washington crossing the Delaware, theirs is basically a bunch of middle-aged men disillusioned in a sort of a hyper-capitalist society looking for meaning or socialism in that society. So their activities document them traveling or them uh, getting together and, and discussing um, um, their next project or, or, or having just a communal activity together. Uh, maybe at this point, uh, Shen Rui Jun, you'd like to engage them in a discussion, or we could also open it up to audience questions. Um, I think uh, we already uh, experienced and see two pieces of uh, Polish Shear Forms artwork today before the opening in Queen's Museum. One is the this five empty chair and also is the exercise. And so I really wonder, like, how do you feel about Polish Shear Form? Uh, does anyone have some feedback or comment or idea? Artists want to answer? Ah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think this uh, is like deep for all of you and also for us. Uh, uh, this not design. It's uh, just uh, the level uh, develop from our the first uh, artwork only one wall, that is uh, the, that wall is all in the blue water. I think that is uh, very important for us. So we do a lot of look like minimalist, but it's not minimalist. It's a lot of uh, life behind the water. So I think now you get that, so you become our life and also uh, you, you know our uh, group the title is a uh, Polish form everyone is in the form so it's not talking about me talking about we so now we are Polish form thank you <laughs> Craig. Yeah, I, I just had a question about uh, if this is a collective issue, the Queen's item. Uh, you can imagine that there has been collective issues in China for a long time before we had an association with the communist. Uh, 
Uh, so when you think about collectivism, do you think about it purely as a socialist phenomenon? Or do you look at it as something that has very deep cultural historic roots of which socialism is a particular 20th century expression or manifestation of a set of much older cultural values? And then if you think about it that way, obviously there have been many countries that have experienced socialism, communism, that are now in a much more rapidly capitalistic state of, of economic organization. So have you found other collectives in other formerly communist countries that are, um, people have experienced something in communism or socialism that they now miss? Tough one. <laughs> uh, from my point of view, it's it's based on their individual's experience, um, the collectivism as they know it, um, growing up in the socialist sort of environment. Um, yeah, I want to add a little bit more because I... I, I guess my question is, we, we use the, the term socialist, but my guess is the experience that they're experiencing is not the, no, no, no. the sole result of socialism. Okay, right. so my, my question is, how much do they tease that out in terms of how much has, has a longer cultural history what they're experiencing in China before socialism, and how much of it is a direct result of socialism? It's very interesting because, you know, uh, when he asks us a question, so we need the translate to translate uh, what's the meaning. So uh, that is a part of a uh, performance. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe I, uh, so may, uh, we have a five uh, member of the, our group. So for each one, I have a different answer. So I can do performance to do the answer. So maybe you can follow me. Uh, you know, deep breathing is like, right? So maybe you can follow me use the other way. So usually we bring the air inside first, then give air out. But this time, you learn the new way is to bring air from your body to get out your body first. <sighs> then you bring, you bring fresh air into your body. So this is like our to do how to relationship the story and the history is the same way. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, I will translate. What's the difference? 跟历史之间的关系，就是我把咱们把。身体里的气都放掉，然后再吸进来，那个新鲜的气体。Maybe yeah, my, my personal question. experience as a curator of this group, um, because I uh, am a younger generation um, um, between, uh, after them, I never uh, uh, experienced the cultural revolution. But uh, so I think like the communists or the socialists is not like um, uh, the discourse, the major discourse I bring up with the group, um, but the collab, uh, the collab, the collab, listen. <laughs> 
out of um, the uh, socialism um, experience is what they want to bring up. And it's very interesting for me, it's like when I joined this public uh, sh share from groups activity, even though I never uh, experienced the cultural revolution, I never had this ex experience of collective life, I feel really enjoy. I think uh, the main value of this group is like having people to get together, to share their uh, life experience and uh, share their sameness, but uh, not just bring up the uh, like uh, all this ism, but like have people to get together. I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit about the event that you have scheduled for November 3rd. This is very interesting. I think it's November 3rd, this public art event of the mopping in Times Square. Um, and it's fascinating, this idea of looking at that from the lens here of the US and then juxtaposing that in China, the idea of the, us here perhaps uh, yearning for some kind of collective and vice versa, what you were talking about, the individuation that's starting to happen there. So I wonder if you could just talk about, A, um, do you ever, will 500 people come? Will, how will you document that event? What meaning does that have? And then what is the kind of sister event that will then happen in China, or will there be one? Uh, the event in China has already happened. Uh, so this is the uh, sister event <laughs> here in uh, Times Square. Um, but Shen Jun is the curator of, of both of those projects. And the idea was to see the different experience of the collective activity on both fronts. Um, and maybe you want to speak Yeah, it's to because the, the do the same good deed is like a propaganda tool which is used um, from our government. Uh, it seems like uh, calling people to go, do good things to um, other people, but actually it's a, a, a tool to brainwash people. So uh, it's it like, it, in a way, it's not good in China for us. Like, for example, when I first go back to China four years ago, and I still see the governments ask the student to uh, um, clean the floor uh, before the the Asian game in Guangzhou, the city I live. So I was really against that because um, they try, so it seems like it is a good thing, but actually it's the bad thing. And because students not good at cleaning for, and, but uh, like calling for the government, they have to get out from their class and go to the public space to like uh, mopping the floor for an hour. And they, they really take everything and broadcast it. And it seems like we have a harmony society. So, uh, so I really against that, but um, but back to my story why I created this show for, with the public share form, um, because I have like a couple years living uh, experience in uh, New York and Chicago in the state. And I personally witnessed the uh, uh, loneliness of my classmates, studio mates, and my friends. And this country give, uh, 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 educates me being independent. But I also see a lot of problems going up, like being too ex uh, independent. So that's why I... Um, uh, create this show with Polish Year Forum, which is doing the issue of collectivism and the individualism, and they uh, propose the same performance, which happened will, uh, already happens in China and also will happen in Times Square in New York. We also want to see if, if we bring up this collectivism idea in the state, what uh, people, how people will react compared to what happens in China, because we have a, so, a totally different social context, and what does uh, what does it, it means? when the collective uh, happens. One thing I just want to add as well, um, these guys are called Polish Share Form Office, but another way to sort of read their name is the Office for the Pure Form of Politics, uh, Shear meaning pure. So they're, they're sort of taking these forms of politics and exploiting them in their own ways, like the campaign to wash the floor by the students, which has become just an empty gesture that's broadcast to sort of show how um, the students are helping the good of society, but in the end, it's just a big inflated empty gesture. So these guys are sort of harnessing those forms in, in their own work, but I mean, their end result is about the collective movement. And um, maybe uh, just following up on this, like what were some of the results in Guangzhou 
Can you talk about how people experience that? Yeah, actually, people enjoy it. <laughs> um, it's very funny when first uh, we start uh, decide to do this performance. Uh, we are really worried because uh, it's like a, a group activity, and uh, we, we just happen to pick the day of June A. Is where like to this year is like twenty five, uh, like after June four. So as I, I, we we was really worried. The Tiananmen and, uh, massacre. Yeah, and uh, we are thinking we, sh we should report to the government who are we are, who we are going to report and like we we try to find out all this problem. Uh, but actually, uh, it it ended up so good and we just report to the police station and then they send a couple of people to really help us and then uh, the young student and also some uh, volunteer come and then we have a great time washing a car together. So I think like uh, it's really not about political. It's it's about being together to share the same experience and to uh, joy to have fun. It's like uh, what we just did, like stretch our body, and I I hear people laughed. So you do enjoy the experience, right? Uh, it's like here. It's like now, you participate in our performance, just uh, doing exercises and uh, do a lot of good things for your body. I think we start from the body and uh, to make deep thinking of our life. So in Times Square, it's the same. So it doesn't matter how many people can enjoy that. But we think there should be a lot of people enjoy them. Oh. <laughs> OK. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Um, um, don't worry, we're just doing a couple of closing comments. We're not going to keep you here for the rest of the night. <laughs> really? Um, hi, I'm Hitomi Iwasaki from Queen's Museum. And just a half a minute I wanted to still hear is that Politshare Office, form, former office, is having performance. But we discussed earlier with Lisa and everybody to um, schedule this whole thing based on the original date was November 2nd, but it had to be changed after everything was announced and imprinted. And it has my, our Queen's Museum's official sincere apology that it had to be changed no, to day don't after. I apologize. Just tell them that it's, okay, a, it's, it's, yeah, it's, not, it's not on Monday. It's not on, uh, no. Right, it's, it's not a Sunday the 2nd, it's Monday, but it's Monday, the third. November 3rd yeah. at noon. And we're hoping to see you as many of you here to be part of that. I think it would be an interesting event. And thank you. So sweet. I was just being Japanese. Just so, such a guilt. We just apologize. So funny. <laughs> okay. Um, we can't just end the night without um, thanking you. Um, you have to give yourself a big round of applause. It's going to get the blood circulating like uh, Polly Shu from office just did. That was just so beautiful. I, I, I don't know how else we could have um, ended the night because of the way we started this morning. Um, I said, you know, I found cosmic currency is energy, and we ended up with um, this cosmic currency that was just given to us. So. I hope that um, you take all of this in. Uh, it might have been tiring a little bit, uh, but please come back. Tomorrow we have um, almost as many um, incredible uh, presentations by uh, artists and art professionals. Um, uh, we'll be in the same room uh, the same time, 10.30, and uh, we'll, we'll end at 7. Um, I also want to thank all uh, the volunteers uh, for ACW field meeting. They've all taken um, you know, two days out of their life to be here to uh, help us out with the, pro uh, the whole project and the program. Um, I want to you know, thank Shin. Um, it was uh, a, 
a big marathon we've been running since May uh, together, and um, I'm I'm just really touched and moved for the first day. Thank you all the field meeting um, presenters, the artists, for being part of this and remaining and being part of the collective um, that we envision that we can create. Um, and uh, I hope you come back and get more of this um, tomorrow, okay? Get some rest. Well, just one quick thing. It, it was so, it ran so smoothly today. Um, because Ambika, our colleague, is in the visual audio room making sure that everything runs on time. Um, even booing people off stage, that's part of our job. So please come back tomorrow. I want to thank Chloe, who was Mrs. Jung for us as well. She just was commandeered last night to do that, and she did a wonderful job. Thanks, Chloe. Thank you, Ambika. We love you. We couldn't have done this without you.